What's up everybody? Chris from Profoto. I'm here with my consigliere Kate. She's right there. Hold on, she's going, there she is. Oh no, she didn't pop the, you didn't pop the program oh, up. They still didn't see you. That's awesome. Oh, come on. Oh. There she is. Can't trust her. Can't trust her to push the right buttons. Yeah, um, this is very no. <laughs> <laughs> So today we're actually talking about the differences between umbrellas and soft boxes. I've been getting this question a whole lot lately. I wanna address it on a live. This way you can kind of see some differences uh, with and without diffusion, obviously on the umbrella. So when uh, Leon says, I'll preface this by saying that once diffused, the difference is probably negligible. Maybe, maybe not. That's why we're doing a live. So we're gonna talk about the pros and the cons of both why you might want to choose one over the other one, and then we're going to photograph with it. That way you have an idea of, you know, what you're looking for when it comes time to choose a modifier. It's, this is always good information to have. So, hey everybody, I see JR Photo, what's up, Mohammed Mohammed, my man Anthony Falsarella, what's happening? What's up, what's up, what's up? Hello from Indonesia, from John, what's up, Joaquin? Carl Mullins, my man. So, let's start with the softbox first. Pros, cons, let's get down to business. So, um, the first and foremost, the upside for soft boxes, let's go pros first. I'm, I like to stay positive for the most part. So the nice thing about an Octobox, one, the reason you go with an Octobox over a soft box is because of obviously the round shape. Round catch lights in the eyes are more appealing. So that's kind of one of the, the big reasons. Um, okay, cool. Uh, for some reason, I felt like the camera was pointing that way and I was over here. But one of the, the nice things about an Octobox, once again, is that round shape. It creates that really nice round catch light in the eye that's very appealing. It also throws the light in more of a natural uh, conical, or not conical, but round shape, something that you would see from like sunlight. So it's got a lot of the, the characteristics and vibes that are really appealing to the human eye just because think about all the, you know, the thousands and thousands of years we've been walk, walking around in the sun. So really, really beautiful stuff. The other great thing about going with the route of the Octobox is how much control you actually have with an Octa. So in the Profoto world, our Octoboxes and softboxes are recessed front. So that just means that the diffusion panel sits in from the, the lip of the, thing. I'm trying to turn it. Okay, cool, you can see it. So the diffusion panel sits in from the lip of the, the Octobox itself. This is gonna give you some edge control. So whenever you're taking your light and you're feathering it here and there, uh, let's, you know what, let's do this. Let's kick down this light a little bit. It's probably gonna fight us a touch just because it's bright out. It's, it's not super bright outside, but maybe we can see this here. We'll go with a warm light in hopes that you can see it. Uh, no, I think that's probably fine where we're at. So I'm gonna kill this other big light really quick, just so we can, just so we can maybe see a little more. So the nice thing about going with an Octobox is you have a little bit more edge control. You can actually see the line right there, especially if we start bringing in. You see that line? So you have an actual edge that you can control, which is. Oh, you can see, oh yeah, there it is on the, far, on the wide shot. So you can see that edge that you have control of. So you can actually take the light and point it right where you want it. One of the great things about this. So that's why I'm a big fan of recessed front soft boxes, uh, especially once you start getting into really big modifiers, having a little more control is nice. Whereas with, um, and we'll, we'll dive into umbrellas, you don't have quite as much control. So this is a really, really good, set up there. Let me kill that and bring my light back up so we can talk some more. I like, if you don't know me, I like talking. Cool. Sick. So edge control, big, big deal. On top of that, you have the ability to use other accessories to modify your softbox. So taking that edge control to another level, you could go with something like a 50 degree grid and this is going to allow you to take that light and focus it even more so being able to continuously modify the light to point it where you want once again once you start getting into really big soft boxes like five foot octas a grid is a really dynamite thing to have because that thing throws light everywhere so recess front this is like comedic timing recess front uh, options as far as controlling the, the front of the Octobox with grids. Some soft boxes like our new OCF strip boxes come with strip masks so you can actually narrow the light a little bit more. So you have 
some cool features there. Double diffused on the inside, so when the light hits that center diffusion, it takes that light, blasts it all over, so you're getting really good coverage inside the softbox, but also the double diffusion is gonna cut down on hot spots, which is nice, especially with things like the B10, B1Xs that have that flat front, uh, where the light's gonna come out uh, you know, pretty direct, that center diffuser is gonna knock that down a whole bunch. So other big pro for this, which is also kind of getting into something that's a con, but a big pro is because the setup is with a speed ring and it's got these you know steel ribs, uh, these metal ribs. I know the, uh, the OCS stuff just to keep it lightweight is like a, a fiberglass uh, material. It's still pretty dang robust. Um, the nice thing about having that is you have a sturdier, uh, a sturdier light shaping tool. Whereas, and once again, we'll get into the umbrella thing in a second, it's not quite as sturdy. So because you have that sturdiness, you also have the con, which is setup time. So for the most part on an Octobox, setup time isn't gonna be the best thing in the world. Uh, you have to go through and set each one of these uh, rods into the speed ring. Sometimes it requires elbow grease depending on the softbox you choose, something like our RFI line, which are you know real heav heavy duty uh, steel rods uh, with, you know you can get them up into five foot octobox sizes, four by sixes. Sometimes they take a little bit of el elbow grease to set up. Now, if you have the ability to travel with some of these things where you don't have to break them down, maybe that's not that big of a deal, but I don't think a lot of people do. like. There's not, a, there's not a lot of vehicles that four by six fits inside of, short of a box truck or a pickup truck, right? Or a van. So breaking down is something you have to think about. So setup and breakdown time takes a little bit longer with the softbox, not that much longer. And especially once you own it and get into the groove of what, or uh, of how to do it. Like I have my techniques, I try to show it to everybody uh, when it comes to setup and breakdown. We've gone over them a million times, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bother with that today. But pros, again, softbox robust, so they can handle a lot. Uh, I would trust a light falling forward onto a softbox before I would trust a light falling forward onto an umbrella. The chances of the umbrella shaft breaking, pretty good. Uh, I know that because I drop a lot of umbrellas. I'm really, really bad about dropping my umbrellas. Uh, so this is one of the reasons I'm really excited about the three foot OCF Octa. So super robust, edge control, light shaping tools for even more control. Really, really nice stuff. And they and you can get them in a lots of different sizes, which is really, really great. So cool. Cons, setup time. is really, for me, the only thing I can think of the con is the setup time. Other than that, good stuff. Umbrellas. Let's talk pros. So shape, once again, just like the Octobox, round. So you're gonna get that really nice, beautiful, uh, round light sh light characteristic that's really appealing to the eye. Once again, it's appealing just because of the thousands of years that the sun has baked into our brain, the, the round shape of light hitting things. So just really, really beautiful stuff. Uh, it's even more round than an Octobox, so it's not gonna have quite as many like hard edges, which obviously an Octobox has eight. This is gonna have 16, so it doubles that, so it starts to feel a little more smooth. It's the same thing whenever like camera apertures have more blades, the bokeh starts to feel a little bit more round as opposed to uh, having more kind of like hard edges, octa-style octa edges or like six edges. Depends on how many blades are in there. So really smooth, they're really lightweight. So portability is probably the highest with these. And then setup and breakdown. If you've ever used an umbrella before, like in the rain, it's the same concept. I mean, I'm, I'm, I know that you all know this, but for all those who don't, you're set up, right? That's great. Downside, light control. So with an umbrella, you're not gonna have quite as much light control. The deep umbrellas are gonna give you some, and this is a deep umbrella, this is the medium. Uh, so they're about the same size as the three foot octa. I think the, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the medium is a little bit bigger, like 42 inches, whereas we're at 36. So it's a little bit bigger, so it's a little softer. Not by much though. So you don't, you're not gonna have as much control. One of the things you can do with the deeper umbrellas is you can push the light further into the umbrella. And what it'll start doing is utilizing different portions of the umbrella. Let's see if we can, let's see if we can show that on the wide shot here. So this is where you're gonna have, with the deeper umbrellas, you're gonna have a little more control. 
So let's see if I can kind of get this out of the way so you can see it. There we go, that's not bad, right? So as you push the umbrella out, it starts utilizing more. And you can see it starts to diffuse itself out a little bit. And then as you start to push that umbrella in closer, you can point the light out a little bit more. So you do have a little bit of light control depending on how much of that umbrella that you're using, which is cool. So you could point the light, uh, you could point the light tighter if you'd like that. If you'd like something more direct, uh, you could push it back out and utilize more of the edge of that umbrella to get uh, a smoother edge. So really cool there that you can do that. That's gonna be more of a deep umbrella characteristic, uh, just because once again, you have the ability to, um, to push that all the way in. So you have a little bit of edge control with the deep umbrella, great. With a shallow umbrella, you're gonna have less because the goal of a shallow umbrella is literally to throw light as far as you can. It's really, really good for lighting groups. Uh, you can you shoot it into walls to, um, you can shoot it towards the background if you're going doing something like high key and you wanna illuminate the whole thing. A couple of shallow umbrellas does a really, really good job of that. So like I said, edge can, or, uh, Light control can be an issue with an umbrella. Upside though, once again, deep umbrellas are gonna give you a little bit more than a shallow umbrella. Other downside is they're not as, um, they're not as robust a light shaping tool as something with some harder spines inside of it, like soft boxes and octoboxes and stuff like that. This uh, rod, in order to keep things lightweight, you know, most umbrella rods are hollow. Just, it keeps the weight down. Uh, there's uh, little clamps and stuff in here that allow the umbrella to stay open and closed up and stuff like that. And you can fit those mechanisms into the, the, the shaft of the umbrella right there. I feel like the grid is, even though it's fell, it's already, it already has fallen, it keeps falling. Like how is it on the ground right there? But it keeps <laughs> sounding, I think there's a ghost in here. Sorry, I digress. Um, <laughs> But once again, lightweight, which is a big pro, setup time, big pro, rolls back to a con of it not being quite as robust. So that's one of those things that you wanna think about when you're talking Octobox versus Umbrella. So once again, let's just kind of go over. Both of them are round, really, really beautiful shape, really great catch light in the eye. Perfect, so you relatively similar shapes as far as the, the tools themselves go. Upside for the Octobox, recessed front, the ability to put soft grids in there, so control. You have a lot of control with this. So once again, we showed you the edge. You can kind of move that to the side. Sweet. The 50 degree grid is gonna take that light and harness it even more. Less control on the umbrellas. The deeps are gonna offer you some. So once again, that's gonna be, that's gonna have everything to do with pushing the umbrella closer or further away and utilizing more or less of the umbrella itself. The silver exaggerates that, uh, that, push in and, uh, and further pull away just because it is, it's a lot more pointed than the white is. Um, speaking of uh, umbrella shafts breaking, I broke the umbrella shaft of my medium white. That's why we're not using it. And also I figured since the silver inside of this matches the silver inside of this, that'd probably be good too. Uh, especially once we put the diffusion panel on this. So uh, really, really good stuff. Once again, a, a lot lighter weight, faster setup than your Octobox is gonna be. Uh, downside is not quite as robust as your Octobox is gonna be. Cool, so I think I covered everything there. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do some photographs. I'm gonna take a three foot Octa photo of Kate, uh, just the Octa. Then I'm gonna take a three, uh, I'm gonna take an umbrella shot of Kate, just the umbrella, and then we're gonna add the diffusion panel on there. Because the diffusion panel should start giving us uh, a little more of that feeling of the Octobox because it's diffused just like the Octa. Uh, diffusion doesn't make things softer, it just makes things more even. Uh, we can talk about that another date, but it's, I know a lot of people will think that like when you pop a diffusion dome on top of an A10, that it makes the light softer and it doesn't, it just makes it more even uh, because the size is still the exact same. So uh, we'll do, put the diffusion panel on here and kind of compare what does the diffusion panel give you on an umbrella that an Octobox doesn't or does. So really easy stuff. I'm gonna answer a couple questions before we set this bad boy up. Is anybody asking anything or is it just highs? Yeah, uh, what if the inside of the umbrella or the softbox is white instead of silver? Yeah, so it should, it's gonna be a little less efficient. Uh, the, most of the time uh, things are silver on the inside when they're hitting diffusion panels because you wanna try to keep as much of that light 
available that you are that you're definitely going to lose once you hit a diffusion yeah, panel. Says white will spread the light more than the yeah. silver. Yeah, yeah, light's going to the white's going to spread, but it's also not going to be as efficient. So it will hog up some of the light. The silver will hog up way less and in some instances be more efficient so it can it can reflect it all back out uh the silver once again when i show you in a second when we uh photograph with it and when i showed you with the edge control depending on where you put the umbrella to the light can very much be pointed let's see personally i prefer controlling my light bit Oh, I'm reading this wrong. Umbrella is great for outside group photos. Umbrella is dynamite for outside group photos. The umbrella is great for um, a lot of stuff. For You can do my, until this came, my outside portrait light shaper of choice was always a large umbrella. I still use it a lot. Uh, once again, because of setup and breakdown, um, but the nice thing is, is the OCF stuff with uh, the OCF speed ring is a much faster setup than like my four foot RFI Octa, which I didn't love bringing with me as much. Uh, but yes, umbrella is dynamite for outside. Anything else? Zach said and says no snookers. Hi, Zach. Love you, baby. Um, and I miss you. I want to come out to California and grab some dinner. Yeah. Dinner. Drinks and dinner. Cool. Let's do it. All right. Let's. Rock the cast bus. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me put down my chat. Let's push. I'm going to turn this light off because that will infect our. Cool. So, like I said, first shot. We're going to do pretty basic stuff. Um, I'm going to keep the light. We'll bring Kate away from the background. Just a skosh right there. And then let's go. We're going to go light just above eye line, point it down a touch. Um, one of the things I like to do, I don't know if I've said this enough, but try to get the light, if you're photographing a person, try to get the actual head of the flash itself above the person's eye line. Uh, sometimes if you if you have it too low, just move this out of the way so you can see Kate's eye line. Uh, sometimes if you have it too low, you can get, um, you, it starts to look a little uplit. So I'm trying to save some pain right there for, for people. Cool. It's a little dark in here. That's better. So perfect. So we're going to go with that. I'm going to grab my camera. I think I'm going to change. Let's shoot. Let's stay with my 35 millimeter. That way we can kind of see what's going on in the background. So let's go TTL. Yeah. So I have Kate right there. She is, I'd say you're probably three feet from the background, four feet from the background. Uh, three. three feet from the background. Light is about three feet from you, right? Arm's length? Yep. Cool. It's about three feet three feet from Kate, so here we go with a TTL shot. It's so cold in here and there's like air coming Oh yeah, you're right like, below the like little, little chill bumps. Cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put the modifier in the shot too just so I can see it. There we go. Three, two, one. Perfect. So there's a three foot octa shot. Let's roll in the umbrella. I'm putting the modifiers in there just so I don't forget which one, which ones are which. So I'm gonna push this umbrella in just a little bit more, and you're gonna see that this is gonna be way more pointed. I'm gonna make sure that that's. Does that look like that's on you? Hot. There it goes. It's high. It's too high. A little bit. Here, let's. And so this is one of the things you have to pay attention to with the silver umbrellas. I'm actually gonna go here, maybe lift it up a little bit more. Yeah. Does that feel right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Once again, one of the things you have to pay attention to with the silver umbrellas is that they can have a hot spot, uh, which we were just adjusting to make sure that it was at least hitting Kate on the face. So same thing, arms distance. Cool. The, the, let's actually bring this a little bit closer because the umbrella is the light source and not the... Uh, that's about the same. Yeah, so that's about the same right there. So we have to bring the umbrella a little bit closer because the light source is further away now. So let me have this right here so I can see what I have. Three, two, uno. Okay, silver, big difference. So let's pop, let's pop That's a, a really big difference. huge difference. Let's pop a diffusion panel on there and then we can start getting down to the nitty gritty of can you make the umbrella, especially the silver one. Once again, the white umbrella is gonna feel a lot like, um, is gonna feel a lot like a softbox. 
even without the diffusion panel. But once you throw a diffusion panel on the white umbrella, it really starts to feel, uh, feel like a softbox, I think. Once again, just without, without the uh, addition of the edge control. So let's throw this diffusion panel on here. Yeah, yeah. Do you, you want to see bounce versus shoot through umbrellas, or you want to talk about them? We can we can talk about it. So, a shoot through umbrella is gonna. So here's one thing. Let me let's talk about it after I stop rattling this uh, diffusion panel because I know it's probably not the best sounding thing in the world. Cool. Sweet. We're set there. I know I did the cool trick one time where I was able to like pop the umbrella up in the diffusion panel, but I don't feel like embarrassing myself that much today. Let's see, because I'm good at it. So also, uh, just so you know, power level wise, is it 6.3 on the same shot? Um, Pre-diffusion panel, so we're gonna see how much that power level changes uh, with diffusion panel. So same thing, distance wise? Yeah. Cool? Yeah. Let's kick this around, perfect. Just like to see exactly what I'm using. Three. Two, one, perfect. Sweet, so let's look at some photos, peoples. So first and foremost, let's go full screen and let's select. Can you pull yourself into the frame? Oh yeah, 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 totally. Is that better, more better? Cool. More better. Sweet. So first and foremost, looking at the differences between using the soft box and the silver umbrella, huge difference as far as like how the light is controlled. The softbox, a lot more spread because it hits that diffusion panel, and that diffusion panel lights up a huge section. So that's where you're getting a lot of this coverage from. The silver umbrella, because it hits a certain point of the umbrella, it utilizes, it utilizes the center portion of the umbrella a little bit more than the edges. So a hot spot will pump back out from that uh, umbrella. Oh, by the way, we lost a little over a stop of light by going with the diffusion panel. We went from 6.3 to 7.5 with the diffusion panel. So just so we know what's going on there. Um, someone's asking if there are different strengths of diffusion panels that you can buy. So we don't make anything other than the one that we have. I think there are some diffusion panels. You could you could probably get your own silks. Uh, you could probably source some silks and have different levels of diffusion to take it down. I believe, I think we label it on this thing. Let's see. Uh, yeah, so this is a one and a half stop. It's called a uh, medium diffuser 1.5. So you lose 1.5 stops of light with this diffusion panel. Uh, I think some people make some. You might just be able to make your own and put a piece of elastic around it, uh, but 1.5 is the only thing that I've ever known us to make. The only other silk that we've ever had that's a little less diffusion is the original Beauty Dish silk. You can see here. So the original Beauty Dish silk's a little thinner. You can kind of see my face through it. So this is the only other thing I've ever known that we made a, a lighter version of the diffusion. So cool. Let me pop that back up there. Try to make a habit of putting things back in the right spot because sometimes after like doing any type of project in here, I have shenanigans everywhere. It's just, it's, it's bananas. So, but looking at them, because you're utilizing a, a smaller portion of the umbrella in the center and it's way more efficient, you can see the contrast pop big time. What's dope about this is that you can take something like a silver umbrella and then we can throw a diffusion panel on it, which we're, <laughs> I'm looking at the shot of the, the three foot octane. I totally miss focus, but we'll, we'll check that stuff out. The cool thing is here, let's, let's get rid of the, this so we can go side by side. Light control wise, they, they do look pretty similar. Um, I would say, I really wish I wouldn't have missed focus on that three foot. We're gonna zoom in and see how awesome I am. Look at that, totally miss focus. It's all good though. We can still kind of see stuff. Characteristics wise, they're pretty similar. I would say that this feels like it's filling a little bit more uh, than this. It's, this is still going to utilize a center point because the light is hitting the diffusion panel at a certain point. It is still gonna utilize a little bit more of it than 
say, using the white umbrella with a diffusion panel over it. So the white's gonna kind of fill up and be a little more even. It's what the diffusion panel does on an Octobox is you fill that diffusion panel up and that shoots the light everywhere to fill up that front diffusion panel. So that's what that center diffusion panel is doing. So with the silver, you're not hitting something to fill up the whole umbrella. You're hitting something right in the center and it's bouncing back out just like it did when it was by itself, if that makes any sense. So yes, you are getting some diffusion on the edges of the panel, but you're getting more, you're getting more light to the center. So it looks a little different. Does it look a lot of different? I don't think so. So the cool thing is, is you could go from, and this is where I was going with what I was saying a while ago. If you want the option to have a couple of quick different looks, think about this. You could literally, you could literally get two looks out of your modifier by adding a diffusion panel or taking the diffusion panel off. Get something really, really smooth. If you needed to get more coverage on your background there, if you needed to isolate your subject from the background a little bit more, make them pop and have the background fall off, take the diffusion panel off. You could push the you could push the umbrella in even more and utilize less of the center of that umbrella and you're gonna get you know more of a spot coming right out of it. I mean, you can tell too with like the fall off on the body, like down here on the dress, the coverage difference is massive. So that's one of those cool things you can get out of a, um, and you know, we'll do one other thing too. Let's, I'm gonna throw that grid onto the three foot Octa. I'm gonna get Kate in focus. Hey. I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna throw the three foot grid on there and let's see light control wise, if adding the grid feels similar to the silver umbrella. So let's try that. Cause that would make, that would make sense if, if something like that felt like that. So, Let's go, and I think I might take one more three foot octa photo of you in focus. So, just for funsies. Right, let's do it. So pop this back, so you're in your spot, arm's length, cool, we're about the same. Mm -hmm. Perfect, so let's take a, let's take one more three foot where I press the focus button in the right spot. See, so here we go, let me push this out of the way. Perfect, so. Three, two, one. Oh, my D2 turned on. <laughs> Why is my D2 on? Oh, was my D2 on the entire time? No. That's weird. How did my D2 turn on? So I apologize. Just, uh, that's moving around. Yeah, things are moving and shaking. I need to double check and make sure my D2 wasn't on the entire time because now I'm freaking. Oh, I didn't turn this light on. That's why the D2 just fired up because this light wasn't on. Here we go. We're back in outer space. Let's see. Arm's length, you're good. Cool. Three, two, one. Oh, my D2 was on and it was affecting it. That's way different. My D2 is on party peeps. Let's, let's take these shots over again really fast. So let's go, there's a three foot octa. Let's throw the grid on. My D2. I didn't notice it firing. I didn't either, but I did look at one point and I saw a second catch light. And when I saw that second catch light, I was like, oh, I must see something from the window. The D2 makes way more sense now. So we're gonna throw this grid on here. The nice thing about the grid setup on the OCS stuff is it's a, it, it's a lip system. So it kind of just goes over the edge. So it's done, grid's on. Where's the Velcro wing can get a little, uh, we're good there, perfect. So let's go with the grid. See what kind of control we have with the grid. Cool, we're gridded. Let's turn this off and move it out of the way. I'm moving and grooving now. And since the diffusion panel is already on, we're gonna leave the diffusion panel on for this shot. Give me arm distance. Let's go right there. Perfect. That was fun. Good thing I had that turned on. Here we go, three, two, one. Perfect diffusion panel. Makes a big difference. I mean, it's not a gigantoid difference. Arm's length. Perfect. Perfect. And now we'll be able to check all this stuff out too as well. Three, two, one. Whoa. One more shot. It's super. I'm gonna hold on, stay right there. I'm gonna I'm gonna actually turn the TTL down. It's it's firing like crazy. Let's go down the stop. Here we go. Three, two, one. I'm gonna go down about a half stop more. Right there, three, two, one. Beautiful, perfect. 
My TTL didn't like that last exposure. I apologize, party peeps. I had my, I had a, so I don't know if you can see it on the wide shot, but I have a, I have a big six and a half foot by six and a half foot scrim right here that we use to run our video light through. Uh, and I also have a D2 that I keep back behind there. And I plugged it back in, I had, I had unplugged it to do something else in the studio and I put it back in and it's set to auto turn on. So it, uh, it apparently automatically turned on like it was supposed to. So I guess that's good stuff when it does what it should do. So let's go boom, boom, boom. Here we go. Here are our four shots together. We can compare them now without a D2 infiltrating the background. So three foot Octa, no grid versus grid. So you can see the coverage falls off a, a lot. You can see here on the dress, you're starting to lose a lot on, uh, a lot more light here on the coverage. That's what a grid's supposed to do. So now you have, you can see you have the edges over here and you can see with the grid, you have an even more pronounced edge and you have less light down here on Kate's leg. Cool. Then you get into something like your two foot and this is, this is actually kind of telling too, because I know we were talking about there's not gonna be much of a difference between the uh, three foot and then the umbrella with diffusion. But if you actually look at the coverage on the background, it covers way more. You can see light-wise, they're both relatively the same softness. Let's go here. That's the umbrella with the diffuser. That's the umbrella with the diffuser. So I tried, to, I tried to take them in an order also that keeps the things that should be relatively similar to the things that should be relatively similar as far as light control wise. So here, Octabox, no grid. Here, umbrella with diffuser. So the umbrella is acting like an, a soft box. So once again, more, more coverage on the background. You can see here too on like going down Caitlin's leg. The light is relatively simil some, uh, similar here, but there is still a little bit more coverage. Softness wise, like if we look at shadows under the nose, under the chin. Can you try to control the umbrella by feathering? You can, you absolutely, you can, but, so the umbrella sans diffusion panel is gonna have a little more control with the feather. Uh, the diffusion panel will take some of that feather control away, but you can still, instead of shooting the light at the person, and are, are they asking me to shoot it now? I don't, I don't know. I don't gotcha. Think so. so instead of having it direct, you can still take the light and you can push it and you can light them with the side of it. So you could push the light past them and light them with this light as opposed to the light coming directly from there. You can, you have that ability, but you also have that ability with a soft box. So it's not really a, um, an advantage, but if you're, if we're just strictly talking from a control perspective on how to get more control out of an umbrella, absolutely. Shadow wise, um, they look almost the exact same. So softness, really, really nice. Once again, I think just because you don't, you have less of an edge uh, with the umbrella with the diffusion panel, you can see that it's giving you some more coverage. Whereas right here you can start, so like if you look right here, for example. So this light feathers off a lot more smooth Whereas here you start seeing where that edge starts to play a little bit of a role in that soft box. Cool. So then we jump over here to a gridded uh, Octabox versus something like the silver umbrella, no diffusion panel. The silver, if you look at the two between diffusion panel and, un and not diffused, way more pointed. It was way more efficient as well. So we had to bring the power down. Still a really nice soft light. It does produce a little bit more of a harder edge shadow just because you're utilizing the, the main portion of that light is coming more from the center than it is the edge, uh, but it is feathering nicely. You can still see the, the shadow starts to become a little bit more pronounced even though the edge is feathered really nicely. Whereas here, the, the shadow is feathered quite a bit. Coverage wise, uh, for the most part, uh, you can see that the light hits the thigh, just kind of like it did in the diffused version, but there's more contrast now. So whereas there might be a little more detail over here, this starts to fade off to black. So cool stuff. So that's your differences. Is a Octabox, does it look the exact same as a umbrella with the diffusion panel? They don't look the exact same. And it's because of those characteristics of having that edge control uh, and having, you know, 
the diffusion panel kind of light the whole edge up. So you can get a little more coverage out of uh, something with a diffusion panel. So if, you, if the goal is to illuminate a large background and your subject, maybe the route you wanna go is with an umbrella with, with a diffusion panel. That's gonna give you a lot of coverage looking at this these AV tests. Uh, softness wise, they're both really, really soft. I mean, that's always gonna come down to, is it a big modifier in relationship to the subject or is it not? And in this case, they're both relatively large. Uh, Caitlin does have a big head, but not as big as the softbox. Definitely not as big as my melon head. I have, an, I have a gigantic noggin. So it's, uh, it's unfortunate for my children. Um, <laughs> if they got my noggin, which I think they do. Yeah. Um, wow, yeah. My son is is doomed. So that was really cool information. I'm gonna make sure we don't have any other questiones before we sign off. What's up? Can you try the umbrella by feathering it to get a similar effect? Uh, you know what? Let's just let's just feather it really fast with the diffusion panel and just show it just in case you know there. It's it, I kind of feel like they're asking for a demo of it. So let's do that. So I'm gonna throw the uh, diffusion panel back on the. Let's try feathering it without the diffusion panel and see what happens. So, a couple more shots and we'll see what's up. We're good here. Can you pull your, um, your chat bot? Oh, my chat bot's all up in the, all up in the area. All right, cool. Cool, chat bot out. Yeah. Cool. Sweet. So, right there and then give me an arm's length right there. Cool. So we're gonna shoot this past Kate now feathered and see what the light difference looks like. This is the silver umbrella, no diffusion panel. I'm gonna stay at the same power level just to see what happens. See what the, the light difference between um, pointing it and feathering it. So we go. Three, two, one. A little darker. So let's bring it up about a stop just to see what the it makes sense that it's gonna be a little underexposed with the feather because it's no longer pointing directly at her. That looks really nice. Should we throw the diffusion panel on really fast and do it? Hey, why not? We're here. Cool, leave that light right there. Go this way so you don't have to look at my backside as I put a diffusion panel on. Anybody got time for that? Hopefully everybody's having a dynamite week. It's a... Uh, hot here in in the south but uh hopefully everybody's happy and healthy and doing well it's the only thing i can wish for for everyone success so i appreciate y'all hanging with us this long as we bumble and fumble but uh sometimes it's fun to mess up arm dunction perfect so let's go take one ttl shot like this Cool. So now you can, let's pull up all the shots and you can see the difference with feathering. Let's see. Cool, let's go boop. And let's pull up the others too. Well, that's a lot of photos. That might, I might have pulled up too much stuff. I might have to. I might have to lower some of these. So here we go, just so we can kind of go through them, and you can see them from a distance. We have the octa, octa gridded, so you have a little uh, a little bit more focus on the light. You have an umbrella with a diffusion panel, lots and lots of coverage, nice and soft. You have an umbrella fired directly at Kate. Am I? Yeah, I'm right here. Okay, cool. Yeah. Umbrella fired directly at Kate right here way more contrasting that's just what that's kind of one of those things the silver umbrella does you get a lot of the same stuff out of like silver beauty dishes uh hard reflectors with silver interiors that kind of stuff those are the characteristics you can expect from silver and then here's silver feathered kind of zoom in still pretty soft once again contrasty just because the light's very pointed so we're catching her with the edge of that pointed light i had to actually go up and i think i'm probably still underexposed by a touch um, I had to go up a stop from where we were on that last shot. So just the feathering alone, I lost a stop. And then you have the 
the diffuser, oh, it's nice that they're right here beside each other. You have the umbrella diffusion, feathered and not feathered. Once again, really, really soft, pretty much the exact same light quality. You do have obviously the edge starting to show right here, which is nice. So you could use the edge, which once again, I said you could do earlier. Uh, a lot of times though, that just has to do with uh, two pushing the umbrella into, you can see how hard the silver edge is right here. But you can also, funny enough, see this little bit of light creeping around that edge from where the uh, the reflector, the light hit this side of the reflector and bounced back out. So I think that's kind of funny. In what instances or circumstances would you prefer using the umbrella over the Okta, vice versa, studio or on location? I would use both studio or on location. Um, if I know that it's gonna be a windier day uh, on location, I might go the route of an Octabox just because if heaven forbid the light goes down, I have a feeling if the light goes down on the softbox that the softbox could probably take a little bit more force than I know an umbrella shaft can because I've dropped many umbrellas. It's, it's an, an umbrella is generally my go-to on location just for setup and breakdown. I think I missed a question here. Can you show how deep the white diffuser from the, I'm not sure. Oh, from how, how deep the white diffuser is from the, the um, inside the, I mean, I don't know if this is what you're asking, but you wanna see how deep, on, let me put you on the white shot real quick. how deep the white diffuser is. Uh, you might actually need to go to the tight shot yeah, so they can see okay. this. You might wanna just pull the, the umbrella down a little bit. And get okay, gotcha, oh, I, I see what you're talking about, okay. cool. So like, I don't know how well you can see this, but like, it's relatively deep. It's probably. Would you say that's two, two feet? It's probably a foot and a half from the from the center of the umbrella to the diffuser. I'd say it's about a foot and a half. So it's it's got some space in there for the light to bounce around, no doubt. Uh, if that's the question you're asking, I don't understand the question uh, any other way. You might want to. Yeah, rephrase it. Rephrase it for a dummy like me. I'm I'm a dummy. So, uh, but that's those are just kind of the things you need to think about. So. In looking at this, where would I use a an umbrella with a diffusion panel? I would probably, if I know that I need coverage, if I want, maybe if I'm going out shooting and the, the look that I'm going for is light and airy, and I want that flash to blend in with the ambient, I'm gonna want as much light coverage as I can get with as little uh, information of a, um, like an edge from my light. So in looking at this, that selection to me looks like an umbrella with a diffusion panel pointed right at the subject, okay? Because that's gonna give me big coverage. I can blend that in and use that as my fill light and it'll start to look really natural. If I'm going for something with more drama and I really wanna isolate the subject, silver umbrella right at the person uh, or go with uh, a soft box with a grid on it. Uh, my, I don't know if you saw on the uh, IGTV that we released on short light this week, but that was uh, the main light on that was the three foot with the grid just so I could control that and then put the fill light where I wanted it. So hopefully that answers your question. But I think this is pretty cool as far as the, the lights go and, and what's doing what. I think it was I think it's a pretty neat comparison. So is an Octobox the same thing as an umbrella with a diffusion? No, they're not. Are they similar? Kind of. They have some, they still have some differences. The softbox is still gonna have a little more edge than the uh, the the umbrella with the diffusion panel is gonna have. That's not good or bad. That's just information that arms you with the ability to know what modifier to choose for the job that you're doing. So if you, once again, if, I, if you need something with less edge control and you need the light to spread, this bad boy, umbrella with a diffusion panel. If you need some more control, take the silver, no diffusion, tons of control there. Or if you still want spread, but a touch more control, softbox. If you need something a little more robust, softbox. So just, these. this is not, these videos are never to say, oh, you should definitely own a softbox over an umbrella. It should just give you the information that you need to make sure that the, the investment that you make in one or the other of these light shaping tools is the right investment for you. I want you to have a modifier that's gonna last you a long time that you're gonna make a lot of money with. That's the goal. So, or just have fun. If, if you're just a hobbyist, just have fun with it. Something that's gonna last you quite a long time. So, I, was any other questions before we sign out? Another question, is there any mod 
sizes that you would suggest avoiding with a flat front light because the light won't fill it? No, I, I know a lot of people. A lot of people get hung up on the the flat front flashes. Uh, and light modifiers, but honestly, I use my four by six all the time with my B1s and I don't have any issues out of it. The diffusion panel in the center is there to do two things. It's there to take the light and spread it through the soft box, whether you're using a domed light or not. Uh, it's also there to cut down on the hot spot, right? So, but that center diffusion panel does a dynamite job of taking all of that light, dispersing it through the soft box and throwing it out there the chances that you'll see a, a ginormous difference between using a flat front light and a domed light are most likely not there. I spent, I know Andrea Beluso and I were in Sweden for like a week and we went through every single modifier on a pro head and on a B1. And even though sometimes you can visually see the difference as far as like efficiency goes in something eating something up, when we actually photographed the subject, we couldn't see it. So. Do I believe do do I believe the dome works best on certain modifiers? I would use a dome on a beauty dish. That's just my thing, unless it's the OCF and you can push it a little bit closer to the deflector plate. Uh, but if you're using the standard beauty dish, like the metal one, this on our wall that I still oh you can't actually you can barely see it sitting over there. So if you're using that standard beauty dish right there, the the aluminum one that has a stopper plate inside of it, I would probably use a dome on that, just because you don't have any control to push it past the um, past where it needs to go so the light's not leaking around the edge. So does it make a big difference? If it does, it's negligible. Any other questions? Looks pretty good. Cool, this was super fun. Once again, this is nothing more than to talk about how to pick a modifier. So once again, let's just quick little breakdown and then I'm signing off with this bad boy. Con pros, both of them, round shape, really, really beautiful, natural to the eye. Fantastic stuff. Softbox, you have recessed front edge control and you have the ability to add things like soft grids to give you even more edge control. You have a solid structure on the inside based off of all these eight different ribs. So it's a little bit more robust of a light modifier. Really, really wonderful stuff. Easy to break down. Not quite as easy to break down as an umbrella, but especially in the OCF world, a little bit easier to break down. A con would be some of the bigger RFI, some of the bigger, ro really robust soft boxes. They can take a little bit of elbow grease. So that can be a con on a soft box. Upsides, once again, even more round just because it has more, uh, more spines, more ribs than a uh, Octobox has. Beautiful round shape, easy to set up and break down. It's an umbrella for crying out loud. Uh, the diffusion panel goes on really, really easy. It's just elastic. Super simple there, beautiful light. You can modify it a little bit. Downsides, not quite as robust. It's definitely uh, doesn't have the same level of durability as something like uh, an Octobox is gonna have with those harder rods. Uh, so if you're on location, just make sure you have a sandbag or an assistant that can hold this thing. Uh, you can modify it a little bit with the diffusion panel. Uh, you just don't have as much edge control, so. You can still, you can push the light in a little bit further. You can, you can feather a little bit and that gives you a little bit more control, but not quite as much as you're gonna have with the Octobox. So cool, that was fun, party peeps. Any, anyone say anything else or are we good? I'm good. Perfect, thank you all so much. I hope you had an awesome week. I hope you have an awesome weekend going in. We are not, um, we're not here on next Thursday. I think we're doing a rebroadcast. So, uh, but we'll be back in like a week and a half, or in two weeks. It'd be two weeks from today. So we'll be back in a couple of weeks, but thank you all so much for kicking it. If you wanna get at me, I'm at the Chris Fain on like Instagram and stuff like that. So if you wanted to shoot me like a DM, or you can DM me here uh, on Facebook if you wanna talk about some more lighting stuff. You can also check out the Pro Photo Share the Light community. Uh, we do a lot of sharing of stuff there. We talk a lot about lighting and stuff there too. That's on Facebook, that's one of our groups, or that's, that's our official Pro Photo group. And then you can get at us on Instagram and stuff like that too. We'd love to talk to you about all that stuff. So in the meantime, hopefully you have an awesome weekend. Stay safe. Later.